Now let's summarize some of the things we've talked about over the past few videos. And we've discussed a couple of rather simple but important building blocks for writing programs. And we started by discussing comments. And we've seen, and we are seeing right now, in fact, that any text following a hash is a comment. And that's provided that hash symbol is not part of a string. In other words, not enclosed in quotes. And comments are simply ignored. We also talked about obtaining output. And the way we did that was to use the print function. As we worked with the print function, we observed various things about the syntax within Python. And we saw that arguments, or what we'll often call parameters, are enclosed in parentheses. We also saw that arguments are separated by commas, if there's more than one argument. We saw that the spacing between arguments was not significant. We could have any amount of space between the arguments, or between the arguments in the parentheses, or even between the function name in the parentheses. We mentioned that arguments are separated by commas, so let's just emphasize the fact that we can have multiple arguments passed to a function. In the case of the print function, it can actually be an arbitrary number of arguments. With other functions, we'll see it's a fixed number of arguments. Finally, there are some functions, such as the print function, that can have optional arguments. And these are arguments, if a value isn't provided, they take on a default value. We also talked a bit about bugs, and we saw that the interpreter raises an exception. In other words, it will halt what it's doing and print an error message for certain kinds of mistakes in our code. And those are syntactic errors. When we've made a mistake in the grammar so that the interpreter cannot tell what we really intended, there are other kinds of bugs where we could write something that's legal code but doesn't give us the desired result. Those are semantic errors. And remember that bugs won't break Python and don't hesitate to experiment with code. We also discussed ways you could obtain help. And there is the built-in help function that can be used interactively or you can provide as an argument the thing with which you want to obtain some information. We saw that idle provides call tips. So if you're familiar with a function but need some reminders about the arguments or parameters that it takes, these call tips can be very useful. Call tips aren't provided in all implementations of Python. For example, if you use the command line environment to use the Python interpreter, you won't obtain these call tips. We didn't discuss it in these videos, but you should keep in mind that there's a wealth of information available from the official Python website, python.org. And if you follow the link to the documentation directory, so that's slash doc, you could get all the information you could hope to find concerning Python. Finally, I should point out that there are many excellent Python textbooks available. And you should consider investing one of these. And there are actually some very good free textbooks available online. We talked about strings. And we saw that this is any text, a collection of characters, a string of characters in quotes. And it didn't matter if it was single quotes or double quotes, provided it was terminated the same way it started. 
We will have much, much more to say about strings later, but one thing that we saw now, one of the underlying details, is when we write the two character combination slash n, that is what we call the new line character that tells the computer to terminate the current line of output and start a new line. We also talked about interactive sessions versus running a program from a file. And when we use the interactive environment, this environment where we see the three greater than signs, it's the interactive prompt, as soon as we enter a statement, it's executed. However, we can open a file, store our commands in that, and those commands aren't executed, they aren't interpreted until we explicitly ask the interpreter to do so. And this allows us to go back and correct, change, and modify our programs in a rather convenient way.